Hey guys, my name is Toby and uh, today I want to talk to you about shooting video on Fuji cameras. I have been doing that for a couple years on the X-T3 and the X-T4, which is uh, filming me right now. And a few of the new cameras that came out uh, certainly got me interested in to see how they shoot and handle video. So I thought I would share what I found with you. First of all, I think Fuji is super underrated uh, in the video shooting mirrorless world. I've been using it for, you know, client professional work uh, for the last few years, shooting uh, weddings and events and uh, the corporate stuff or documentary kind of stuff. Uh, and in terms of the image it produces, I think it's been uh, fantastic. X-T3, X-T4 both have been really good for me and so what does the X-S10 and X-E4 have to offer? We're going to look at the price, we're going to look at the internals, kind of what they do with video and Kodak and all that stuff. Then we're going to look at the external and the usability and how they handle that. And then I'm going to talk about just some of the intangibles, the pros and cons of each one and I have, you know, I haven't use an XS10 or XC4, but with the XC4 and XC3, uh, I can comment. Uh, and then just uh, who's it for? And so uh, I think it's gonna be in the timestamps below. So if you wanna jump around, you can do that. So first of all, you will note that of course, the XC4 and 3, you can purchase a grip, whereas with the XS10 and XC4, those aren't available. Um, and where does it matter? With XC3, it actually comes with an AC adapter. Uh, so you can plug it right into the wall and power it through the grip. Now the other, I would say, important thing with looking at these prices, with the newer cameras, you can't buy it used. Whereas the X-T3 and even the X-T4, but the X-T3 especially because it's almost two and a half, three years old, but still sold brand new, uh, you can find it used. And in fact, I sold um, one of them uh, with uh, the grip and some batteries. So, you know, that's gonna play into perhaps the decision that you make in terms of the budget that you have. So let's talk about just the internals and how they handle and shoot video. So right across the board, you can see there, they all shoot 4K, 24 and 30 frames per second. Uh, no crop and that is great. Uh, but the next you'll see the XC line starting to differentiate a little bit of uh, being able to shoot 4K 60. Now, if you don't shoot in 4K, 4K 60 is not gonna matter to you. Uh, but if you are or plan to, or will mix it up and perhaps deliver projects in 4K, having 4K 60 for some B-roll, um, even I would say even for corporate work, uh, having some of that slower motion, just a little slower, but also still 4K, um, that if that's going to be important to you, then you're really going to have to look at the XT line. And then below that is this codec, the H265 codec, which um, allows, it's a, it's a different kind of compression. <clears throat> it allows more colors, more color depth. Uh, the downside is that if you uh, don't have a, a computer that can handle editing that, it could be a bit taxing. You might have to make proxies. But I know for me, since using H.265 um, and editing and color grading with the extra color depth, it has made a really big difference. Now with F-Log, this is really interesting because at least for the X-T4 3 and X-S10, those all can shoot F-Log. I'm not sure about the X-E4. It seems pretty new. I was looking for the manual. Didn't find it, didn't find those details, so not sure. It'd be cool if it did. I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't. Uh, the next line is important because the X-T4 and X-S10 allow you to shoot with the F-Log Assist, which means basically uh, you can be shooting, you know, recording F-Log, but on the screen it will show you a, a more usable uh, picture to grade or to, to judge the exposure from, whereas the X-T3 doesn't have that. So being a little bit older, I'm not sure, they just decided not to implement that. Uh, the X-S10 uh, does have that. So that's another kind of interesting, uh, you know, ripple to the, the question of X-T3 or X-S10. All right, so what about the externals? What about the usability of it? Because that is also uh, really important, you know, in these really small compact bodies. With image stabilization, uh, of course, the X-T4 and X-S10 both have that, whereas the X-T3 and X-T4 do not. Um, the next line is really interesting because of all these cameras, only the three, two and a half, three-year-old X-T3 has a, um, a headphone jack. The All of them, you can use the um, USB-C cable to do that. Um, but really, 
a, a strange omission for me uh, that is not on the X-T4. And uh, while it's great you can use the USB-C port, um, the USB-C port is actually very functional and helpful to power the battery. And um, I have a video all about shooting all day on these cameras using a, an external battery with power delivery. And of course you need to deliver that power through the USB-C cable. So you wouldn't obviously be able to use them simultaneously, headphone and power. With the X-T4, if you do get the grip, which of course is another cost, but if you do get the grip, the headphone uh, jack is there. But kind of an interesting change uh, that Fuji decided, not sure why. Um, next is the flip out screen. Of course, if you are shooting yourself uh, or taking any selfies or kind of interviews or things like that, having the flip out screen is uh, very nice. But I would say many video shooters who know that they're always gonna be behind um, the camera much prefer the screen on the X-T3. Um, I think the, the screen on X-T4 X uh, is, is really interesting because you kind of get both where you can just quickly pull out and get low shots. You can tilt and get high shots. And of course with the X-T4, it flips over. You can take a selfie with it. Uh, so it does double duty. Um, and many people, including you know, people I know who shoot photo and video, really still prefer this screen. And I would say with the X-T4 and with the x S10 uh, with this flip out screen, when you do have um, cables and, and uh, USB-C cables or microphone cables, it does, it does affect what I can see. Uh, next up is battery. And, and this is a, a, a real, again, interesting decision that they made. The newer X-T4 has the newer and larger capacity battery. I believe it's twice the size in terms of the capacity. Uh, the NPW235, whereas all the other ones, including the two newer cameras, uh, use the older battery like the X-T3. Now, hopefully they've gotten more efficiency out of it, but that was really an Achilles heel of the X-T3. And uh, really curious with the X-X10 because it has such a large grip that seems to be one of the draws. That So they could certainly have fit that newer battery uh, into the X-X10, but chose not to. And another way the X-T4 stands out is redundancy. Uh, both the X-T3 and X-T4 have dual card slots, and with photo, it can you can get RAW and JPEG or RAW and RAW and, and have that redundancy. Uh, but only the X-T4 has the ability to record video on both cards at the same time. And so that is great, again, if you're shooting uh, client work, professional work, where you want to have a backup. Uh, and last, this is not a deal breaker, but having that movie mode uh, is very helpful in terms of a, a switch, whereas the X-T3 doesn't have that. You kind of have to flick um, another dial all the way to the right, and that has been very helpful. Also, having menus differentiated, a very helpful thing. All right, so what are some of the intangibles uh, with each of these cameras? Well, with the X-T4, I think uh, it's going to be pretty much everything. I mean, the, the newer battery and just that it kind of checks all those boxes. Of course, there's the, the headphone issue, but if you go with the grip, uh, you got the headphone right there and, and two extra batteries. So, um, you know, in terms of no compromise, the X-T4 is a great choice. Uh, with the X-T3, uh, one of the intangibles, I have to say, is this flap, for a better term, on the left side of the body camera, where... Uh, you can get access to the mic, to the headphones, to the use everything, and removing that. Again, I don't know why they didn't keep that with the X-T4. I think you can take off the memory card door, but that's not helpful at all. Um, and so this, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I think I know where the flap is, but I mean, I, I keep it off because it's so nice to have access to these ports. And uh, the other thing, of course, is the image quality. Um, I believe it's a slightly different sensor it's uh, you know uh in the xt3 but uh to my eye and you know there's really not a huge difference when shooting video and again because this can shoot with the h265 codec you get that color bit depth so really great value in terms of finding it on the used market on the other hand of course it doesn't have ibis you know so that's something that uh it might be a deal breaker for you i think 
having the ability to just take out those little shakes um, is really important. And I find I will use this on a gimbal. This is kind of like my B camera that I'll have a set on the gimbal or um, have on a tripod or whatever, and then I'm not too worried about it, but that's something to consider. With the XS10, it really does look like they kind of aimed at more of the people who might have been considering um, the Canon Rebel line or it's kind of entry into the mirrorless world or the camera world, uh, the, the bigger grip um, IBIS that's inside there. Um, I think it's a great choice and I think for people who don't own a Fuji camera yet, um, it's a great choice and you still get the image quality. I'm sure you can shoot Eterna and getting all um, the great colors that Fuji offers. Of course, it does miss out on the more um, traditional looking dials that the XC lineup has been uh, well known for. Uh, and, and honestly, it's very practical to, to look down and to know where you are in terms of your exposure uh, has been fantastic. But there are some uh, upsides to the way they've organized the dials on the uh, XS10. The XE4, of course, I mean, it seems like it's really small, really pocketable. Having that flip screen to take selfies um, would be, I think, very helpful. It kind of has the benefits, again, of the XT 3 and this tilty thing, uh, but also taking selfies. Now, if you do mount some kind of um, microphone on the, on the hot shoe, that would obviously be quite a, a hindrance to using that screen. Um, but still better than seeing nothing at all if you are shooting yourself or a uh, talking head or something like that. So um, yeah, I think the XE4 is very interesting for someone who's looking for just something small, great image quality, you know, moving up from like just taking out your phone per se uh, and getting into the amazing line of lenses that uh, Fuji offers for the APS-C uh, cameras. So last of all, who is this for? Um, you know, for the XT4, it's it's going to be for people who you know aren't going to want to compromise too much on anything, and you're maybe delivering professional work, or just love the form factor, and they they really everything that people complain about the XT3, they they pretty much did in the XT4, uh, and even with the the grip um, added on in terms of cost. You know, it, it is approaching kind of that full frame A7 III kind of world, um, but I would say really rivals that in terms of image quality, in terms of codec, in terms of just the quality you get out of the system. Well, what about the X-T3? I, I think it's for people um, who, you know, know that they're not going to film yourself, so you, you don't need that, you know, kind of selfie flip out monitoring screen. Um, you maybe take, you know, kind of photos 50-50 and you're not too worried about IBIS or you're going to get a lens with image stabilization in it. And obviously it's it's going to be budget too. If you can find it used, uh, you know, where you are on some marketplace, uh, it's going to offer great value for you. The XS10, uh, I, I think again, it's for the people who are, who are getting into Fuji um, and who, you know, are going to want something that maybe is familiar, but offers uh, all the benefits of jumping into the Fuji system. And the XE4, you know, just small, pocketable. And I think for me, looking at, um, you know, the newer cameras, uh, unfortunately, without the abil ability to shoot an H.265, it's not something I would consider. Because the, the question for me is, with the XC3, uh, without IBIS, without the F-Log Assist, would the XS10 you know, be a good replacement or B-cam or a second camera or a third camera or whatever it is? And I think for me, the H.265 codec is, is that big of a deal. Um, a bet that big of a deal breaker that I, I wouldn't sell the XC3 to get the XS10. Those are my thoughts. I don't know if you have any questions about it. Again, I haven't used the two newer cameras, but have used uh, these two cameras quite a bit. Uh, and if you have any questions about them, do check it out. I'm going to make a video about just um, using focus and autofocus on the X-T4. Two tips that I found super, super helpful. And so be sure to check that out and check out any other videos you see on the channel. Thanks for watching.